Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over the reproductive cycle, specifically the woman's menstrual cycle. This video will be part of an NCLEX review series for maternity. So if you're studying this section, be sure to check out my other videos in this series. And as always, in the description below or at the end of the video, you can access the quiz to review your knowledge on this material. So let's get started. Okay, behind me, I have the whole menstrual cycle laid out for you. And what I want to do is I'm going to walk you through it by cycle day so you can understand what is going on. Now, as a nursing student, what you specifically want to pay attention to during this lecture, because it's things asked on your exam, are the following. You want to pay attention to each phase, what is happening in that phase, and when that phase is occurring, specifically those cycle days. Then you want to pay attention to hormones because tests love to ask about the hormones, like the role of the hormone, what it's doing to the body. So first, let's look at what's going on. Okay, a typical woman's menstrual cycle is 28 days. So here we have our timeline, 1 to 28. And mid-cycle is when ovulation occurs. So that is day 14. Now the whole role, the whole goal of a reproductive cycle is to reproduce. So what the body is doing, it's taking your ovaries and your uterus, they are working together in case an egg is fertilized and you have the development of a baby. That is the whole goal. And if that doesn't happen, then the cycle will start all over again, which monthly cycles, women have monthly cycles. So that is what, why all this is happening and what is going on. So what happens is that you will have ovary changes and changes in the uterus. And each phase, each, each stage has three phases. The ovary will have three phases, the follicular, ovulation, and luteal. And then your uterine will have three phases, the menstrual, the proliferative, and the secretory. Now, some of these phases overlap with each other. With the, like with the follicular will overlap with the menstrual and proliferative. And then ovulation will happen. And then the luteal and the secretatory will overlap together. Because as you're going to see, these phases are actually helping each other. What's ha what the changes that are going on in the ovaries is actually helping the uterus get prepared for that potential baby that may be formed. So let's start with ovarian changes. Okay, we have follicular. Follicular phase happens cycle days 1 through 13. And the whole goal of the follicular stage is to prepare a follicle to be released, a mature egg. Let the name help you for each stage. So follicular, follicle, that is the big goal of the ovary. It wants to mature a follicle in the egg to be released so it can be fertilized and implant in the endometrium. So what happens, what is a follicle? Okay, you have two ovaries. You have your right ovary and your left ovary. And you have little fluid filled sacs in each ovary, lots of them. A woman is born with a lot of them. And um, they contain little immature eggs. And what happens is that your body will release hormones to cause some of those follicles to mature and then you'll release it during ovulation. So the body's doing that during this cycle. So how does it do it? Okay, your hypothalamus, it will release gonotropin, gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will cause your anterior pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone, also called FSH and luteinizing hormone, LH. And these two hormones play a huge role in getting that egg developed and released. So what happens is whenever your ovary senses the anterior pituitary gland releasing FSH, it starts to stimulate those follicles to grow. Now several follicles will start to grow, but only one will mature into what's called a graphene follicle. Graphene follicle is the mature follicle that will release the egg, and all those other follicles will die. They will not release an egg. Now, as this follicle grows and gets bigger and more mature, 
you will notice if you're charting hormones that estrogen will start start increasing because that follicle is releasing estrogen and whenever estrogen is released it's slowly going as that egg maturing you will have a negative feedback loop from your hypothalamus to the ovary which is going to cause a little dip in fsh and luteinizing hormone because it's signaling to your body the estrogen rises is that that egg is maturing so your body doesn't really need all the fsh and the lh right now because that egg is doing its job so you'll have a slight dip but then as that egg matures and it's ready, it's ripe, it's ready to come out, you will have that massive peak of estrogen because it's signaling that the egg is ready. Whenever you have that massive peak of estrogen, you will have a positive feedback loop, which is gonna cause your anterior pituitary gland to release a massive amount of luteinizing hormone called the LH surge. LH plays a huge role in getting that egg out of that graphene follicle to go into the floping tubes to possibly get fertilized. So LH's role is to cause the egg to be released and mature. And it does this, whenever you get that huge surge, it's gonna break that wall of that graphene follicle that has that mature egg, and that egg is going to come out of there. And then it's going to cause that follicle that released that egg, that graphene follicle, to turn into a very important structure called the corpus luteum. Now, here in the luteal phase, you will see what the corpus luteum does. It plays a role in secreting progestogen, progesterone and estrogen. And what those hormones do is it's going to make your body, your endometrium specifically, receptive for potential implantation of a fertilized ovum. So that's what it's gonna do. Now, after you have this LH surge, about 24 to 36 hours after that surge, the egg will be released. So you have the surge, then a little bit later, the egg will be released. Now, the most fertile days for a woman are about the last five days of the follicular phase and then 24 hours after ovulation. So about cycle days nine through 16, depending on when the woman ovulates and everything, because this stuff is not clear cut and dry. Every woman varies. So about nine to 16 days of the cycle is whenever she is fertile. Because remember, um, your LH surge happens 24 to 36 hours and then the egg is released. So typically the LH surge can happen days 11 through 13 and then you have the release of the egg. And sperm, if um, sperm is present, it can live in the reproductive tract in ideal conditions up to five days. So it can be there um, hanging out until that egg is released. Now, corresponding with your follicular phase, remember we got some uterine changes going on. And the first phase of the uterine cycle is the menstrual phase. And this is cycle days one through six. This is when the woman will have bleeding and she is shedding a layer of the endometrium. And this layer is called the stratum functionalis of the endometrium. And what's happened is that last cycle, pregnancy did not occur. So the progesterone and estrogen levels dropped. That caused the body to cycle all this back over. So hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone, then um, causes the anterior pituitary gland to release FSH, LH, which is going to start stimulating those follicles, and the menstrual phase is happening during the follicular phase. So all this is working hand in hand. So after about one to six days, we will go into the proliferative phase, and this is cycle days seven through 14. So here in the menstrual phase, she shed the layer. Now the goal is to rebuild the stratum functionalis in case the egg is fertilized and it needs a place to implant so it can grow, which is in the endometrium. So it will start rebuilding. How does it rebuild? It rebuilds with due to estrogen being secreted. And where is estrogen being secreted? 
from that growing follicle that's fixing to release the egg because it knows, hey, a mature egg is coming. We've got to get ready. We've got to rebuild this layer in case it implants. So it's working hand in hand. And also that estrogen will cause, you know, the layer to rebuild, but it also will affect the cervical mucus. It will cause the cervical mucus to thin, become more sperm friendly, which um, if sperm does present, uh, the thin mucus will allow it to migrate easier, easier to the fallopian tubes for potential implantation. Okay, so we've had our LH surge. We're now on day 14, and this is the ovulation phase of the ovarian phase. So we have ovulation. The egg is released after our LH surge. Now the ovum, it's now called an ovum, it's released into the peritoneal cavity. Then it's swept into the fallopian tube with the help of the fimbrae. The fimbrae have cilia on them and these little cilia act like little fingers and move in a wave type motion. And whenever that ovum is released from that ovary into the peritoneal cavity, the fimbrae cilia get that ovum and sweep it into the fallopian tube so it can get fertilized. And the egg will only live for 24 hours and then it disintegrates. Now, um, a woman, if she's charting her basal body temperatures, she may notice a dip in basal body temperature and then around ovulation an increase of 0.4 to 1 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if sperm is present to fertilize, the most common site of fertilization, I would remember this, is the ampulla of the fallopian tube. The ampulla is most commonly where the sperm and the egg will meet up and fertilization will occur. Now, so let's move to day 15 through 28, rest of our cycle. We're in the second half of our cycle. We just did the first half. We had our midway point of ovulation. Now we're in the last part of it. Okay, it's called the luteal phase, and this is cycle days 15 through 28. It also corresponds with the uterine phase, phase changes, which is the secretatory which is 15 through 28 as well. And again, you're gonna see they're working hand in hand because the whole goal of this whole phase is to prepare the endometrium for potential implantation of this hopefully fertilized ovum. But if it doesn't, there isn't any fertilization of that ovum, what will happen is that our cycle will restart again and will come all the way back over here and it'll just repeat itself. Okay, so what's happening here is that our corpus luteum has formed. Remember, it formed from that follicle that released the egg. And this is going to act as a temporary endocrine structure that is going to help support pregnancy. It's very, very interesting how it works. So um, the endocrine, what it's gonna release is a lot of progesterone which is going to play a role in the secretory phase of the endometrium, which um, it will cause the endometrium to be receptive for implantation of that fertilized um, ovum. And it stimulates estrogen production, which are your two main hormones that keep pregnancy viable and going good. So your corpus luteum will stay in place for 14 days. And if there was no pregnancy at all, um, it will disintegrate and turn into the corpus albicans. Now, what will happen is because your corpus luteum is secreting progesterone and estrogen, that's its goal, and you have no FSH and LH because that negative feedback loop, it suppressed that because we don't want that. If we have that, our menstrual cycle is gonna start over. And if we have a fertilized ovum, we don't want that because we need progesterone and estrogen. So um, if it dies, you're gonna have a major drop in progesterone and estrogen, and the cycle is going to start all over. LH and FSH is gonna come back. Now let's say that fertilization did occur. Well, the corpus luteum will stay in place because it has a very important job of keeping that progesterone and estrogen in the system so that fertilized egg can implant into the endometrium. So what will happen, what causes it to stay in place is that the embryo will start to release HCG, 
which is human chronic gonotropin, which is what pregnancy tests pick up. And this prevents the corpus luteum from dying. So it will stay in place and the corpus luteum will stay in place until the placenta takes over and your placenta produces massive amounts of progesterone and estrogen to keep the pregnancy. And it will take over, the placenta will take over at about eight weeks time. And then your corpus luteum has done its job and it will die. So that is the menstrual cycle. Now, be sure to go to my website, registerednursrn.com, and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on this material. And don't forget to check out my other videos in this series. And please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.